al-Baghdadi falling into the hands of ISIS as the Iraqi army evaporates. This as the terror group gained ground in Ambar province, some predicting a collapse of the area within hours. ISIS forces you know, is attacking Mosul. Thousands of civilians, religious minorities fleeing an onslaught of violence. The explosions start to be higher. We watch horrific images of Christians being beheaded, uh, slaughtered, their throats slit. When they took me from the highway by gun and they put the rifle in my eyes and chained for nine days. ISIS claims its militants are still on the streets of Tikrit. ISIS have crucified a man in Syria. Still there's this suspension of belief that that would ever come here. They hit Christian especially. We don't know why. Anyone who follows Jesus faithfully will pay a price for following him and holding fast to the truth of God's word. Doesn't matter if we live in a place attacked by ISIS or a community where we're considered social pariahs for standing on God's word. Jesus knew that it would be this way. How is it possible to be faithful despite the forces that oppose us? of all this suffering, faithfulness isn't a decision they can rely on from long ago. It's a daily choice to stand and to persevere and to remain faithful. In the midst of the suffering, we see the pastors are faithfully shepherding their people and serving their people. So we have here over 560 people. Uh, we have 240 kids. And already here, born three kids. So we are going to show you the rooms here before it's being prepared for the families that to move in. So as you see here, now we have two rooms that is going to be providing a shelter for maximum 15 people, which means three to four families. This is how it looks here. Windows, there is no glasses on, and even the door is not very good that to shut it and protect yourself from the cold weather. And also the, the roof and the sink, it's really leaking while it's uh, rain, raining in the season. And the lights is not good here. It's really, uh, the, even the, you can see the walls that it's not very good that to stay here because it was like I told you that it was using for the warehouse. So we are developing it and somehow we are trying that to move out the families from parks, public parks. That to bring them here, at least they can have a shelter like this. Once a week, we distribute 500 uh, bags of food to those people. What I saw in the last few months was a good opportunity to show them a different God that ISIS talk about, God of love. The temptation would be to say, I've lost everything, and yet I remain here in the constant threat of ISIS. And therefore, God's not faithful to me. But instead, I hear from them that God has been faithful to them and they sense his presence, that he's always with them, even in the midst of the suffering, even in their present difficulty. <laughs> Two times they put bombs beside the church wall, but thanks God it was a miracle, you know? It did not explode. The first one, after we discover it, we called the police and they came and they brought uh, a robot 
to come and cut the wires. And you cannot imagine, they sent the first robot, and we were watching the robot by the uh, screen. The first robot came, and before he reached the bomb, he stopped. Of course, they, they, they were moving him by the remote, remote control. They tried to return him back or to let him go forward. He refused to obey. They have another one. They send the second one. That one also came and stopped behind his brother. Then the officer asked me, what do you have at your church? I told him, I, I don't have anything. Then they discover that because our church contained an FM radio station, the frequency of the antenna of the station make the frequency of the remote control come together. Therefore, the, the, the robot dis, did not uh, obey. So I told him, I can go and make the uh, station off. He told me, never do th so. The, the bomb did not explode because of the, your frequency, because they were going to, to explode it by remote control. Then in 2011, we discovered the second time the, the bomb. Now this bomb was connected with a watch, stopping watch. And also it was miracle because the stopwatch stopped by its own self five minutes be before the time. Stopped by the, itself. And the police came also and took the bomb. You know, we experience here in this six months too many of God's promises. Like he's not letting us lost. He's not gonna let us be hungry or in need. We, every one of, of the church came and tell me, I experienced what's the meaning of our Father God. People have lost, uh, some of them, they lost everything. Uh, but, you know, the experience is that through the midst of what's happening, the Lord is working. Still, still He's in, the, in, in control. And this is, this is what's touching our heart. Uh, I was talking to people even yesterday. I would say majority, they don't blame God of, about what happened. Most of them, they say that, okay, because of, for, for His name's sake, we are ready to lose everything. I had some people told me, and from the refugees, they said to me, now we are happy because we came here and we met the Lord and we, we, we saw Him. And even if we lost everything, that doesn't compare to the joy that we have now in our hearts. Yeah. It's true, I have lost everything. My business, my house. I even became displaced and can no longer live in my home village. But I used to be lost too, and now have been found, because Jesus Christ was for a long time waiting at the door and knocking. But my eyes were closed, and I couldn't see it. All this has happened to me, and shown me, and led me to see that Jesus Christ is at the door, so I can simply open the door for him. This couldn't have happened if I was still involved and busy with my business and my daily life in my village. We had an event before uh, uh, a few weeks ago. 4,000 people came to this, these three days of events. And out of the, those 4,000 4, people, I saw it, 3,000 of them stood up and uh, prayed the salvation prayer, like they, they, they gave their life to Jesus. God doesn't require faithfulness from His church without promising to be faithful. Every day morning, me and my wife, when we pray before breakfast, every day, I have to tell her, 
Maybe today is the last day in my life. Here, we believe that everyone can succeed, but actually, as a church, we can be creative. And we believe that less food, less medicine, or people can survive. But less grace, no one can survive. Even in these days when I'm facing difficulties, when I get caught by police, nothing is affecting me. Nothing can stop me from what I'm doing because I know that he's protecting me. Well, I'd like to think that I've been inspired by them and I would, you know, assume that same role and be expectant of the Lord and um, be encouraging to my fellow brothers and sisters and have that joy, but I can't say that for sure. Faithfulness to me is that knowing what I believe is true. Because if, if that is true, I'll do whatever. I know that he is real and what he says is, is true. And that's for me is faithfulness. I just pray that if I am ever tested, that I will stand. The persecution in the Middle East isn't new and it's not going away. It's almost certain to continue or even get worse. And now here in the U.S., we have a sense that things are more difficult for us even here. We need to be encouraged by the faithfulness of our brothers and sisters in the Middle East. And we need to understand their perspective, which is not one that's focused on this temporal world. It's focused on the eternal reality and God's eternal plan and purpose. So I need the Western people, the American, the European, to pray for the church here to stay for the other's benefit, for the other people's benefit. Encourage them and give them hope that your Jesus Christ will never forget you. Encourage them by telling them that you are watching their suffering. Just let us know that there are a brother for us in other countries. They knew what we are suffering. The persecuted church is demonstrating how to be faithful even in the worst of circumstances. They believe God's promises of eternity in heaven with those he calls his own. Throughout this series, we've seen our brothers and sisters that have been marked with the N, the Arabic symbol for Nasara or Christian, and we've seen how much that mark has cost them. But rather than deny Jesus, they've sacrificed everything. They've shown courage beyond human capacity. They've held on to joy, even in the midst of horrific sorrows. They've endured persecutions like Jesus, his disciples, and martyrs throughout the centuries. And we have seen them not only resist harboring bitterness toward God, they have resisted harboring bitterness toward those who persecute them, and have even offered heartfelt forgiveness to those who hurt them. We've come alongside them on this journey to share in their suffering, to bring relief and joy, and to stand together as one. We've seen what faithfulness looks like in the Middle East. What does it look like in your hometown? What does it look like to say with these brothers and sisters, I am in? <laughs>